Hallo en welkom back. Guten Tag. Welkom terug. Um, this is today again the classic head. So we're gonna have classical meters and this time it is from Germany. Uh, it is from Hartmann und Braun. And you might have seen them before because they are not necessarily very rare, but they are very old. And because it's good quality, they are still here. And uh, this one is the Multa V2, it's the Mark II. And as I said before, you probably have seen one before on, on YouTube and on other channels. But I found something special. I found also the first one, the Multa V1. And it doesn't even have a number because it was the first one. And the, the nice thing also here, it has an engraving. We can zoom in on that later. So I know in what company it was used. That is nice. And I want to try to find out what year it actually came from. And I already did some search on the internet. And they were produ produced in the early 30s, so 1930, I think, 32, 31, they started, and then uh, up to, well, in the war it was a bit messy, but they still still produce, and uh, this one was produced, I think, this is also one of the first, because you can see the scale is black, but I shall also come back to that, because later they started to make them uh, with red, uh, red letters. And that started from the 50s all the way up to the 60s. So, uh, and then later they started also with the number three, four, five, etc. But these are the first uh, two, and uh, I like to zoom in on them. Well, if we first look to the second one, it even says in the scale Hartman Brown and Multavi number two. The scale goes to three, so that was already the, what they discussed later in, in Europe, that it would go always to the three and not to the two and all for the four. Uh, I explained a little bit when I did uh, the meters from the USSR and the ones I had last time from the UK. The AFO meters, they had uh, also an international version and uh, yeah, that one also at the three. So they started already here with that. Let me zoom in on that. Here you can see. And you can see this one is also AC-DC. So the bottom one is the DC scale and the top one is the AC scale. And you switch that over, not on the main switch here, but there is a button here on the bottom. Here you switch from DC to AC. And I think the meter need to be used flat on the bottom. Well, here are some. It is in German, French, but also in English. And also, fun fact is, if we zoom in, that you can see that the common connector here is actually the positive, and then the negative for the voltage here, and then the negative for the amps right here. So that's kind of, well, now it would be the other way around. Let's have a look at the ranges. As you can see, it can go quite high. This one goes up to six amps, one and a half, three. Look at this, all the way to three milliamps. And the voltage is 600, 300, 150, three, and six. So they are playing a bit with the double and the single numbers. And uh, well, let's, let's have a look if it still works. Well, as you can see in the back, it was provided with a leather casing. Here we have the first one. 
as you can see it it indeed does look a little bit uh, older but uh, there were ads in 33 and 35 that they were mentioned together so even though this is the first and the other this is the the second model They are more or less produced around the same uh, time. I was a bit surprised because this one does look a lot older, but it also depends where it was. So this was just a more luxurious version with also the AC, and this one only has DC. There is also no switch here. This is just DC, and it is also one scale. And if you look a little bit in the bottom, in the engraving, let me zoom a little bit there, here. It says PEN, and that was the energy network. So that's why it probably does look a bit older because it probably had a very rough life. Okay, it came also in, in leather, this one. I didn't clean it yet, but uh, this is how it came. And yeah, I can just do an easy clean, but uh, for me, it's just that it is nice because it all looks original. And uh, I even have something to get it easily out and don't damage the meter. So after a good clean, they uh, look a lot better. And now I wonder if we can find out from what year they are. So we know it's somewhere between 33 probably and 43 and it seemed that both of them are from the same age so I'm just gonna try to open them okay there is not too much this looks like the current shunt and the switch just Look at this. This is properly built. Yeah, we can open it a lot more, but I'm not gonna do that. I uh, don't see any markings here. I also see nothing yet. I'm, I'm not gonna go further. Because you probably almost need to break it open. No, let's see. Okay, I open now uh, the other one, the version two. And again, the, the, the switch is properly, properly built. Big contacts. The resistors right there. It looks nice. Also, a resistor. Yes, this is super, super strong. And no battery, so I can try them. Let's do that. I will put this uh, back together. Okay. Back together again. Uh, what I did find out is that the Mark 1 doesn't like too much if you put it up because then the needle goes all the way to the bottom. And if you lay it down, it goes to zero. This one seems to be less of a problem with it but it doesn't want to stand straight up because of the button here. So it's absolutely designed to lay flat. And uh, well, we can put uh, 10 volts of the voltage reference. Let's start with the first one, put the two. Well, there is no 10 volts, so we put 30 volts. My little voltage reference. I hope it can deliver enough power to get the needle moving but we will see I'm just gonna do a quick test because yeah it's probably not gonna be super super precise but it is nice to see if it even works here oh it goes to 10 volts it is not even that far off look
two and a half, then I go to three. Yeah, two and a half, nah, that's a bit low, but maybe it cannot provide enough uh, current. Go to five volts. It seems to be five. Seven and a half, almost, and ten. Okay, that still works. Uh, I have a little current source. No way. I have here this uh, process calibrator. Let's see. It is now in current mode. Okay. So if I put it to milliamps. Put it to two. And then, oh. Yes, almost. Look at that. Three. Oh, and that is a bit low. Can I do more? Yeah, it's a little bit low, but it does say uh, 20. So the amp setting also still works. Uh, let me do the back to the voltage because can I go? A bit higher, maybe. Well, it seems when it is powered and you hold it up, it uh, yeah, it changes one volt. So then it's ten percent off. So it really, really needs to be flat. Yeah, and then it's better. Then we do the other one on the same ten volts. And. We need to look at the bottom scale. And then it is perfect. And as you see, now it goes up. <laughs> when you lay it flat, flat, it is good. It's the design of how the meter is made. And also here, the current is still working. This is 60 millis, so full scale. It is now at 30. So if I have 20, it should go to 10, and it goes to 10 exactly. And we can do, do 1.5, 15 millis, 15 millis. So this should be full scale, I think. Yes, yes. 14 and then it's almost full scale okay still works three can i go that low it's, it is a bit junky yeah 10 should go to 20. Yeah, five is 10. yeah not bad three might go to two for two Full scale, two and one. Perfect, cool. Well, they do look a bit better and they still more or less work, so that is very nice. Um, I still don't know exactly the date. And as I said before, uh, there was in the radio magazine in 33, there was an ad that were they were both on and there was a an, uh, manual that somebody put uh, 35 by hand but it doesn't say anything so that probably it was from that year but there was another guy who was a lot smarter and he said well i know that these back plates or scales or whatever you want to call them they have a number and that number was registered and the Germans were very good at registering stuff and 
I have the numbers here and someone, I cannot share this document, but I will send the link where I found this document because the owner is, uh, well, he did a lot of work finding this out and he just doesn't want to share it all around. So you, but you can find it in his page and I will uh, show you. And here I will be able to find what year it is. Okay, I was able to find out. It was actually in this list. So thank you. I forgot your name, but <laughs> I will put your link uh, in my comments. This is great. So by finding out when the scale was produced, the meter was probably produced in that same period. So that is very, very nice to know. And uh, my RV one, produced between July 31 and uh, October 32. So let's say it was 32. It is 90 years old, 90 years old. And look at that, it still looks good. And yes, you can see that it lifts, but for 90 years old, it looks very, very well. And it is, by design, it was 1% accurate on a full scale. I read in one of the specs. That is not doing it anymore, and it is within 10%, but 90 years old. This was really, really built to last. And my other meter, This one is produced between December 35 and uh, July 36. So, well, 85. <laughs> Look at it, it's still shiny. Uh, they built, uh, really, the Germans built a quality product here. So, I hope you enjoyed that. What a nice, uh, nice product from uh, Germany. And, uh, yeah, I, I, my meters are clean now, so I will put them now carefully in a, in a good place. It's nice to know that they still work. They're not as accurate as they used to be, but after more than 90 years, unbelievable. Well done there. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Oh, uh, before, uh, next time, I also have still left France, uh, Netherlands, and they are a little bit newer, but also from uh, the US, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.